Hey everyone, Andreas here. That moment when your app suddenly takes off must be amazing. More users, more traffic, but suddenly your database just starts getting overpowered by requests. Queries slow down, replicas lag, you start to implement sharding and suddenly all your weekend plans are gone. That's the nightmare distributed SQL tries to fix. So today I'll break it down. What distributed SQL actually is, why it matters and how TidyB makes it work in production. Databases have evolved over time. We have had relational systems since, I don't know, forever. They are reliable and consistent, but definitely not built for internet scale. Then came NoSQL, super fast, super flexible, but you lose ACID transactions, strong consistency and real data integrity. Basically, great for speed, terrible if you care about correctness. Quick reminder what ACID stands for. It means every change either fully happens or doesn't. That is atomic. The data always makes sense. That is consistent. Transactions don't step on each other. That's isolated. And once it's saved, it stays saved. That's durable. So what did most teams do? They duct taped everything together. One database for transactions, another for analytics, a message queue in between, a few thousand lines of ETL or ELT code to glue everything together. Because that's never enough, you add sharding, partitioning, caching, retries, failovers and a half dozen dashboards just to figure out what broke this time. The result is a tech stack, jungle, complex, fragile, and oftentimes very expensive. So what if we reimagined the transactional database itself? Cloud native, horizontally scalable, resilient across regions. The best out of the NoSQL world, but still SQL, still ACID. So what exactly is distributed SQL and why is it so good? Let's start with the old world. In a traditional setup, MySQL, PostgreSQL, whatever you're using, your database runs on a single primary node. When traffic grows, you scale up. Bigger machine, more memory and, of course, more costs. Eventually, you add read replicas, but writes still go through one primary node. It's like putting a bigger funnel on the same bottle. Right. Then you get into sharding. Now you've got multiple databases and multiple schemas, which makes the whole thing even more complicated. That's usually the point where most engineers start looking for a better way because it's simply getting too annoying. Distributed SQL flips that model. Remember, big data where systems like Hadoop started scaling out instead of scaling up. That's the idea with distributed SQL. You add more nodes and the system automatically distributes both data and load while keeping full asset guarantees. It looks and feels like one database, but under the hood, it's a cluster working in parallel. Each node stores part of the data and stays in sync through Raft. And if you never heard of Raft, it's basically the algorithm that keeps all the nodes in an agreement. One node acts as the leader, the others follow along and every change gets written only after the group agrees on it. If that sounds a bit like blockchains, you're not wrong. The big difference is that Raft runs inside a trusted cluster. So it's lightning fast and efficient, no mining, no coins, just basically the agreement. That's how TidyB guarantees that even if one server goes offline, the others still know exactly what the latest data is. That's horizontal scalability without losing consistency or SQL. But there's another reason distributed SQL matters. Global scale. Modern apps often live in multiple regions, sometimes multiple clouds even. Traditional databases, well, you know, not so much. With traditional databases, you can do replication, but that will have a lag. Failovers will always be a pain. Cross-region latency is a nightmare as well. Distributed SQL lets you place data close to your users while keeping it consistent across the world. A user in London updates a record. A user in New York sees that update instantly. No juggling clusters, no custom replication scripts. And because 
the cluster handles balancing and fault tolerance automatically, your ops stack gets even lighter. No fragile caching layers, no custom partitioning hacks, just one logical database that actually scales. This way, the transactional layer finally keeps up with the speed of modern apps and analytical databases even. You know me, I like to actually see how things work. So before we look at the architecture, let's do a quick hands-on peek. When you create a free TiDB account, it automatically creates you a cluster. As you can see here, mine is in the EU region. We can connect using the standard MySQL client because TiDB speaks the MySQL protocol. Here, I'm just using the command line to connect to the server, the same syntax you'd use for Postgres or MySQL. Now, let's create a quick table and insert a few rows. First, we create the database, create database demo, then we'll use it, use demo. Then we create the table and we insert some values. Create table users and insert into users values. After getting the data into the database, we do a quick select star from users. Everything feels completely normal, standard SQL, same workflow. The difference is that under the hood, as I said, this data is already distributed across multiple nodes. Well, this data is not very big, but you get the idea. Each node automatically replicates data, so even this small table is stored safely across multiple nodes. So from a developer perspective, it behaves like a single database, right? But operationally, it's a distributed system with replication, failover, and scale basically built in. And if you're a Python person, you don't need to change anything either. Just use the same standard MySQL packages like MySQL Client, MySQL Connector Python, or even SQL Alchemy, exactly as you would with MySQL. Now we've seen what it feels like to use TiDB, let's break down what's actually happening behind the scenes. For this part, we use TiDB, again, which is an open source distributed SQL database powered by PinCap. PinCap is also the sponsor for this video. Use the links in the description to spin up TiDB Cloud Edition or grab the open source build and try it out yourself. Anyway, TiDB is MySQL compatible, as I said, and it runs serious production workloads from FinTech and gaming to massive SaaS platforms. So here's the architecture. On the left, you can see the TiDB instances that make up the compute cluster. That's the SQL layer that actually runs your queries. On top, the orchestration layer handles scheduling and coordination. That's where the placement driver lives. And on the right, we have the storage cluster, which includes row storage, columnar storage, and the new object layer for large and cold data. So TiDB separates compute and storage by design. The SQL layer handles requests, while the storage layer handles the data. This separation is what makes TiDB elastic, fault tolerant, and cloud native. For the SQL layer, think of it as the SQL coordinator. It takes your queries, figures out what needs to run where, and then sends the work to the right nodes. This here is the placement driver. You can see the placement driver as the cluster's brain. It tracks where data lives, balances load, and scales in or out automatically. TIE KV, the row data, is the distributed key value storage. This is where row data lives, replicated across nodes with strong consistency through raft. TIE flash, the columnar data, is a columnar companion for real-time operational insights. It's not a warehouse, but perfect for live dashboards and hybrid workflows. Below that sits the object storage layer. This is where TiDB keeps the long-term data, the stuff that doesn't need to live in fast memory all the time and the large data sets. It's built on cloud object storages, so it can grow or shrink as needed and store huge amounts of data without breaking the budget. Basically, this is the layer that gives TiDB its elasticity, durability, and the ability to run smoothly across different clouds. So because compute and storage are separate, you can scale them independently. More compute for heavier queries, more storage for bigger datasets. The result, a cloud-native transactional database that grows, shrinks, and heals itself. 
No manual sharding, no downtime, no crazy maintenance drama. Let's talk about some real world examples that the engineers from TiDB told me. Here's a good one from the fintech world. A company providing financial data APIs, basically the back end that helps other apps connect your bank account. They started hitting serious limits with their old database setup. They were running Amazon Aurora with dozens of manually sharded MySQL clusters. Every schema change meant coordinating across shards. Routing logic was baked into the application and scaling just added more complexity. They switched to TiDB to get rid of that whole sharding mess. Now TiDB handles data distribution automatically and they scale horizontally without touching application code. The results were quite big, about 25% less operational overhead, five times better resource utilization and zero downtime during upgrades. Now developers can finally focus on their actual work instead of managing clusters and routing. So it's a solid example of how distributed SQL can simplify your life as an engineer, less manual work, fewer outages and more confidence when you scale. Another great example for distributed SQL comes from the SaaS world. Think of a platform that hosts millions of customer specific databases, each one isolated, secure and independent. That's the kind of scale Atlassian faced with their Forge developer platform. They needed to manage over 3 million individual tables across thousands of tenants, with each tenant's data kept separate. Doing that with the traditional database setup would have meant endless maintenance, migrations and complex routing logic. With TiDB, they built a multi-tenant platform where all those tables are handled by one distributed SQL cluster. The system automatically balances load, replicates data for availability and scales out as new tenants come online without manual ops work. So the result here is massive simplification of operations consistent performance across millions of tables and reliable isolation for each tenant's data. Fewer moving parts, simpler scaling and less fighting the infrastructure. So you can see it's not just about speed. People love to talk about speed. It's about simplicity. Fewer moving parts and less maintenance means more sleep for us engineers. As you know, databases have always been about trade-offs, performance or consistency, simplicity or scale. Distributed SQL finally closes that gap for transactional systems. It's still relational, it's still asset, but for the cloud era, horizontally scalable, just like with many NoSQL data stores, fault tolerant and globally aware. TiDB is one of the most advanced examples here. Open source, MySQL compatible, self-hosted or in the cloud. As I mentioned earlier, spin up your free TiDB Cloud Edition or grab the open source build and try it out yourself. The link is in the description. So if you join a company and the database setup already has those scaling pains or you're building something that's clearly going to need scale, think of horizontal scaling and distributed SQL. Thanks again to Pinkcap for sponsoring this video. I hope you learned something. See you next time. Bye.